Good morning and welcome to the First Presbyterian Church of Petoskey. I am Pastor Ryan Donahoe and I'm honored to welcome you here this morning. I'm coming to you from outside today because our renovations are moving along quickly and folks are working all hours of the night and day in order to get phase one of our renovation completed. And now as we begin our time of worship, we begin with these words. This is a Christian worship service, and because it is a Christian worship service, everyone is welcome here, and our doors are open to all people. So let us worship the Lord. Indeed, friends, it is good that we can gather together and we join our voices together in our call to worship. The God of our ancestors calls us to worship. Praise the Lord. That the, the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Let us worship the Lord. Indeed, my friends, it is good that we can gather together that through the use of technology, even though while we may be physically separate, we are still united together. And the good news is that wherever we are, we can come to God with our prayers of confession. And so, Lord, friends, each week we gather at water. We gather at water to remind ourselves that we are in need of Jesus Christ. We are in need of a Savior. So let us join our voices together in our prayer of confession. God of mercy, we confess that like the disciples, we set our minds not on divine things, but on human things. 
Doubting your loving care, we grab for more than we need. Doubting your loving purposes, we shrink from living as your followers. Doubting your loving plan, we become stumbling blocks in your creation. Forgive us that we may gain new life in you. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Indeed, the good news, my friends, is before we were even aware of it, Christ called us by name, Christ has loved us, and Christ forgives us. So let us live into that truth. Jesus, I've forgotten the words that you have spoken. Promises that burned within my heart have now grown dim. With a doubting heart, I follow the paths of earthly wisdom. Forgive me for my unbelief. Renew the fire again. Please pray with me. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, and prepare our hearts to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, that hearing we may also obey your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their, lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? 
For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I continue to be amazed at the language we use to talk about Christianity and how Christianity has been conflated with nationalism and prosperity and wealth. It's been interesting to see the number of churches that talked about following our leaders and elected officials just in the past year, and yet now they say we are called to ignore state orders and mandates, because as the church we are different, we are unique. And the rise of the prosperity gospel in the last few years where you just need to pray harder and give more money to an organization and then you will somehow be blessed beyond anything you could imagine has been shocking. The number of pastors who have cars that cost more than most of our houses or private jets that are necessary for their ministry does more to lead people away from Christ than to bring people to Christ. And I believe that the reason the American church is declining and losing members is because of this focus on prosperity, because of this focus on mine, 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 and getting what I want rather than the truth of the gospel is why the church is losing its members. Let us pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. In January of this year, which was just eight months ago, and yes, it does feel like it was a different time back then, we started talking about our focus on being a Matthew 25 church, of discussing how we are called to live out the gospel to eradicate poverty, dismantle structural racism, and build congregational vitality. And then over these last nine weeks, we have been continuing to focus on these three areas while discussing the challenge of the gospel, how the gospel is difficult, how it's hard to live it out. And in this Matthew 25 initiative, we read about these last nine weeks that this section of Matthew's gospel finds the disciples in frequent situations of conflict and controversy debate and danger. As Jesus' words and actions put him at odds with religious leaders, political authority, societal norms, and cultural expectations. And it seems like those could be words said now about what it means to be a Christian in this day and age, that what Jesus was struggling with 2,000 years ago is what we are struggling with and for and against today. It's fascinating to see this quick shift between last week 
where Jesus tells Peter, Blessed are you, Simon, you are Peter, or Petra, which means rock. And on this rock I will build my church. To this week, Jesus shouting to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. That is quite a shift. But isn't that also how the church has been throughout her history? When we read the book of Acts and Paul's letters, we find that very shortly after Jesus' death and resurrection, very shortly after churches were coming together, that the church was already in upheaval. There were already divisions. There's already a distinction in the church between those on the inside and those we don't want here. And if we look at the history of the church in America, that too has been the case. As I was preparing this sermon, I kept returning to those words of Peter where he says, God, I forbid it. And I wonder how often those words have been uttered within church walls. Just as Peter rebuked Jesus, which was mighty bold of him to do, you must say, so too we have we in the church have rebuked one another and said that will never happen or that's not the way we do things for we as the church have been like peter we have set our things on we have set our minds on human things and not divine things, as Jesus said. That is how we end up with nationalism, the prosperity gospel, and a focus on insiders and outsiders of the church rather than on proclaiming the unity and love found in Christ. That's how we end up with over 200 different denominations just in the U.S. That's how we ended up with almost 30 churches just in Petoskey. You see, we have focused on human things and not divine things. We have kept our eyes focused on our differences in order to make Christianity easy. So we didn't have to wrestle and struggle and pray with those who think differently than us. But when we read the Bible, if we examine the words of Jesus, if we reflect on what happened to Christians in the first few centuries of the church and continues to happen to Christians throughout the world today, we would realize that being a follower of Christ is not easy. That it should not be easy. That it should mean that we struggle with and wrestle with and pray with those who think differently than us. That, yes, our faith may be questioned and that, indeed, we must deny ourselves and take up our cross. And that certainly sounds a little bit different than God helps those who helps themselves, or that financial blessing and physical well-being is always the will of God, as the prosperity gospel says. Rather, following Christ 
living the gospel means that we will and must deny ourselves. That we must deny what society tells us is important. That indeed, if we are to gain the whole world, then we will forfeit our very lives. That indeed, in order to be a Christian, it means that we will look different from what society deems a success. Since January, we've been talking about discipleship, about what it means to be a follower, a student of Jesus, and again and again we have talked about how that is not easy, that it's a difficult road to tread, that indeed discipleship requires something of us. This past week I was reading a commentary on this section, and it said this. Astonishingly, Jesus offers crucifixion to those who would follow him. In a bold assertion of God's boundary-crossing grace, Jesus takes as his logo the grim killing tool of the world's superpower. Take up your cross. If you want to follow me, deny yourself. If you want to find your life, give up your life. Jesus dies in our place. But not to exempt us from the cost of discipleship. For the gospel is an invitation to death before it bestows a new life. I've wrestled with that phrase these last few weeks. The gospel is an invitation to death before it bestows a new life. And while I'd rather that not be the case, I know that it's true, that Jesus calls us to come and die, to die to ourselves. The gospel is difficult, my friends. It creates tension within ourselves. It causes us to stand against society. It makes us unique. And no, it is not easy. For it means we must decide, deny ourselves and take up the cross. But oh, my friends, it also brings so much more. It brings light and love and life. May we continue to be a church that speaks truth to power, that serves those in need, that puts our faith in motion. And yes, my friends, may each one of us pick up our cross daily and follow Christ. For while it is the path to death, it also is the path to new life. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Indeed, O oh God, 
Your words are not easy to hear at all times. For indeed, your words call us to deny ourselves. You call us to come and die. But Lord, we know that in doing so, we gain so much more. Help us to be bold. Help us to rest in your embrace. Help us to love as you have loved us. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. God of mystery and might, whose wonderful works are to be remembered, move in our lives, change our minds, soften our hearts, direct our feet that we may follow you more faithfully. Yes, Lord, we seek to follow Jesus, and we give thanks that you hear our prayer. Lord, we celebrate today and give you thanks for these families in our church, for Peter Gillard, the Fruhoffs, the Froilich family, and for Joanne Froilich. Continue to work in and through their lives. Continue to help them to be your people. Lord, on this day, we especially pray for all teachers, administrators, aides, and students, and all those working in schools. As there is so much change and confusion during this time, we ask for your peace. We ask for the spirit of knowledge to come into those making decisions. Lord, we continue to ask for your peace and healing presence upon Jenny Wilbur, Ian Wilson, Betty Shelton, Bob Doctor, 
Lee Ehrlich Blair. For Liz, Richard, Rob, Cindy, and Paul. And or continue to be with the construction workers who are working in our church on the renovations. And for all those whose lives will be touched and changed that enter into the renovated facility. Lord, work in and through each one of us. Work in us so that we may be bold and proclaim your love and peace throughout the world. And let us now join our hearts together in the prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, the Apostle Paul encourages us, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. And so in loving service to this loving Lord, we now return to God a portion of the bounty God has provided us. Let us pray. Holy God of holy ground. Like Moses, we question our fitness to serve heaven's purposes on earth. Overcome our qualms with the assurance of your presence. Bless these offerings through them that we may do your will. In the name of the Triune One. Amen.
Just a few announcements to draw to your attention. The first is renovations are rapidly progressing and it's exciting to see everything that's happening. And just a reminder that as soon as they are done with phase one, they will be moving right into phase two in the um, Division Street entrance area. So for the next few months, there will continue to be renovations happening at church and the access to the church will be changing at various points in time. Um, but we will keep you updated on all of that. And also, Owen and I are working on another opportunity for having an outdoor worship service before it gets too cold. Um, right now, we are anticipating the date of September 13th, possibly for that, weather depending. Um, so be on the lookout for more information for that as well. Jesus, Lord of our salvation, Savior of our souls, send us out to the world to make you know. Jesus, King of every nation, this world's only hope, send us out to the world to make you Friends, as we finish our sermon series today on the challenges of the gospel, I remind you that while it is difficult to follow Jesus, it is difficult to live as a Christian, 
It is difficult to proclaim God's love and mercy for all people. We do not do it on our own. We do it with one another, and we do it with Christ at our side. And now you know what to do. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to that which is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Music